Last week, we talked about getting rid of white spots on your prints. But what do you do about black spots? Welcome to The Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No. No. No, I won't. Mm -hmm. I sound better in my head. With the white spot, just like I showed you last time, you fill that in with a dye using a very fine point sable hair brush. A black spot, on the other hand, is a tiny hole in the emulsion on the negative, allowing all the light to come through, creating a black spot on the print. You can't spot that out with a brush and dye. There is no white dye to cover that up. So you really are left with three options. The first would be to retouch the negative. Then you could bleach the spot itself in the darkroom. And third, you could use a retouching knife and actually scratch it out, um, also called etching. So I'll show you all three techniques. Now, I'll be honest with you, I usually retouch the negative, so that's where most of my experience is, but I do have some experience with bleaching. I'll show you the basic premise of that, and then etching, I'm not very good at. We're going to make a mess of it, but I'll show you the basics of how it's done. It's the most invasive and uh, the most destructive method that we can use, but it is out there and I'll show you. So, retouching the negative is pretty straightforward. Get your negative on a light box like this, and then to actually spot, I recommend you use just a Sharpie. There are retouching dyes out there. Um, Kodak made a few different things that you can find on the used market. One is opaque black, which is kind of a thick paste that you would put on, and as the name implies, it's black and it's opaque. You, know, you would apply it with a brush, just like a spotting dye. Then there's opaque red, same premise. It's red, it's a thick paste, you apply it with a spotting brush, uh, just like a dye. Uh, and what this basically does is just gives you a red um, mask on the negative that you can see it a little bit easier. They both wash off if you mess up. <clears throat> then you can use something called Crocine Scarlet. Now Crocine Scarlet is still available. You can buy it online very easily um, in like one gram, five gram, and 25 gram uh, increments or something like that. And it's a powder. You mix it with water, makes a red dye. You put it on like a brush. I actually find a Sharpie, a very fine point Sharpie, to be a lot easier. Now you can use a black one like I am, or a red one, either one, doesn't really matter. Red you can see a little bit easier, but with today's um, multi-grade paper, black will probably actually be more effective. So let me show you how to do that first. On this print right here, I have a small black spot right here on the uh, um, near the border. So we're gonna fill that in with the black marker. And uh, from there, that's going to create a white spot in your print so that you can then just retouch it with the spotting dyes just like I showed you in the previous video. So I'm not going to show you that part again for a refresher on that. Watch the first video. Um, for this, I'll just show you how to get rid of the black spot and then you can spot it from there. So you can see the spot right here on my negative. It doesn't appear all that big, but it does get much larger when I make a 16 by 20 inch print. You can also see that there is some red on there from a previous retouching attempt, but because multi-contrast um, paper is not nearly as affected by the red as a graded paper, um, I need to redo this with the black. So, oops, don't turn the light box off. Um, let's get this centered up for you. So all I'm going to do is just put a bit of black ink right there. And that's really it. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It is going to be a relatively large spot to clean off. But if you mess up, you can easily use a cleaner like PEC-12. Let me get this in focus. Oh, there it is. Nice and big. Back 12. 
and a peck pad um, that will clean any of that off if you need to um, to redo it. In fact, I'll show you how easily this stuff can come off if need be. And there we go. So easy to clean up if you need to. Now, bear in mind, this is done on the base side of the negative. This is not done on the emulsion. It is on the base. Um, though the emulsion does clean up just as easily, um, I would be very reluctant to uh, retouch anything like this on the emulsion side. Um, let's just get that filled in one more time. I'm actually just tapping it like I would a spot because that seems to be putting the ink down much better than trying to um, fill it in like a regular marker. Uh, now if you read some old manuals on this, you can do retouching like this with a pencil. And it is just a regular pencil. Retouching pencils aren't anything special. You just get a very soft graphite. But the film base itself doesn't typically have a good tooth for the pencil to hold on to. So you have to use something like a retouching fluid to give it a tooth. Some film does have one. Uh, Tri-X, for example, has a natural um, layer, not natural, but they put a layer, an overcoat of gelatin on the base side that you can retouch. But this is, I believe, Elf, uh, Ilford Delta 100, and there is no such base uh, coat. So, um, the marker works just fine. This will now print with a white spot, and then I can easily retouch that out of the print with my um, spot tone. Or if you watch the whole video, you'll see that I really now am in love with uh, Kodak dry dye. So that's what I will use to retouch the print. So that is retouching the negative. There's a lot of different stuff you can do retouching a negative. I'm only gonna get into this basic right here. So let's look at bleaching. All right, for bleaching, we've got a few different things set up. For one, the print uh, needs to soak in a bath of water that is mixed with one drop of photo flow for every ounce of water. So just let that soak until it's fully wet. I've got a jar here with that solution after the fact um, so that I can keep it moist as needed because you don't want it to dry out. Um, if your print dries out, it'll start to pucker where it's wet. So I'm gonna just got some cotton balls and just keep it damp as you're going along. <clears throat> you can do this in the dark room too, but um, if you're doing it after it's dry like I am, uh, this tends to work. You don't want a lot of water pooling up for this. You really just want the emulsion wet. So I've got my little black spot right here and that's what we're gonna bleach. So I have here um, farmer's reducer, uh, the bleach part. This is um, uh, potassium ferrous cyanide. It is mixed um, 75 grams of uh, the powder or crystals mixed to one liter of water. Um, then I just took a little bit of the stock solution and mixed that one-to-one -one with water. So um, half, half as power, powerful as a stock solution. You don't want it too strong um, or it'll be uncontrollable, too weak, and it'll just take way, way too long. Then in the other jar is part B, which uh, in this jar, just have a little bit there, and that is basically just fixer. Um, it's a slow working sodium thiosulfate fixer instead of a rapid fixer, um, but that will clear everything when we're done. So the technique is fairly straightforward. Um, just making sure it's damp, but not soaking because I don't want the bleach to dilute or to spread out. It can spread out if it's too wet uh, and just go everywhere. So what I'm gonna do is take my brush, this is a nylon brush, pick up a little bit of bleach, 
put a tiny droplet on the black dot and then uh, wipe it away when it's done. So let me zoom in here and give you a better view of what I'm doing. Here's my little black spot and I'm going to clean that up with the bleach. So let's pick up a drop and then have your wet dampened cotton ball nearby just in case things start to get away from you. Now I will admit I am not good at this so I'm going to show you but forgive me if I just screw it up. I don't do this often. All right a little bit of bleach might need just a hair more. So just kind of tap it on like you would spotting solution and then just let it do its job. Yeah, I can see it's already bleaching around the spot, but the spot itself has not quite gotten there. It's going to diffuse through the emulsion um, and grow. So if you need to, you can um, wipe it up with this. I'm actually going to let it work a little bit longer. So what we're ultimately going to do is create a white spot. I'm going to wipe that up. We're going to create a white spot that then, once the print is dry, we can spot with our dye, just like a, a normal, um, normal print or uh, spotting. Okay, so it's lighter, but the area around it definitely got bleached. But there's still a black spot right in the middle. So just making sure I don't have a big buildup of water so my dye or bleach doesn't get away from me. Try to pick up just the tiniest amount because it does want to go fast. Okay, let's see if that works. Gets that spot down. Even if I can't get the black to go away to pure white, if I can get it to a light gray, I'll be happy because then it'll just be easy to to blend in to the rest of the print. It looks like it's getting there. It's just about there. So I tried this before um, in my dark room with the print at an angle like I would be if I were viewing it uh, during the printing process and um, it got away from me. It just created a big drip and ran down the print. So I don't recommend you do that method. Instead, um, try flat like I'm doing. I'm using just the very tip of the brush now to try to localize that spot in the middle. Now you'd be tempted, I think this is as good as I'm gonna be able to get there. You may be tempted um, once you're done bleaching to leave it like that. Um, not as in pure white, but um, to not go any, any step further other than drying it and spotting it. But all we have done with this bleach is actually return, um, return the silver back to a halide. I could put that in a developer and it would just develop back to where it was. We don't want that to happen. Um, but it'll also darken just from light exposure over time. We don't want that to happen either. So let me clean my brush out in the water. And now what I'm going to do, once my brush is cleaned out of the bleach, we call it bleach because it lightens it up, but really what it's doing is returning everything back to its halide form. What I'm going to do now is pick up a little bit of fixer, part B, and I'm just going to put it on there. And now this is going to clear it. This is going to get rid of whatever silver halide was there so that the white spot will remain white. Now it's just white, just like any other part of the print that would be unexposed. If I had put developer on there, it'd become a black spot, even bigger than before. The black in the middle is actually almost completely vanished. It's close enough that I'd be fine. 
So I'm going to let that sit for just a moment and then I'm going to wash it off pretty well um, with a sponge. You do not need, in a case like this, because so little is actually on the emulsion, you do not need to give an entire fresh wash to this. The fixer is not enough and it's not penetrating enough into the emulsion in the paper to justify a whole wash. Um, it's really just on the surface. I'm going to clean that off with plenty of clean water here. And that is it. That is a bleached spot. Now um, I'm just going to take a saturated sponge or a cotton ball and just wipe off any lint that got on there so it doesn't dry on permanently. There we go. And now all I would do is um, let the whole print dry and then spot this just like we did in the first spotting video. So that is bleaching. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to etching. Now etching is my least confident um, sort of retouching. I never do this, but if you really want to try, I want to show you at least the basics. So I've got a small black spot here. I'm going to circle it with a um, white grease pencil so you can see where I'm dealing with a little bit easier. So there's a little bit of black spot right here. So to do this, you're going to use a um, etching knife. Now you can use um, uh, like a, a scalpel blade for an X-Acto knife, that'll work. Um, but this is an actual Kodak retouching knife. You wanna make sure it's very, very sharp. And I am doing this left-handed. If you need to change it to right-handed, go right ahead. But the basics of this is you're not going to gouge it out with the knife. Instead, you want to layer by layer scrape the emulsion down until that piece is gone. So let's see if we can make this happen. So I'm going to use just the tip as best as I can and just scrape it off. No, it's working better that direction. It is not going to be a fast process. Oh. The area around is getting lighter. there. And there we go. So now it's a little white spot. What do we do with white spots? We spot it with spot tone. The problem with uh, etching, for one, it's, d it's destructive. There's no cleaning that off. Um, with the um, with the dye method or the uh, retouching the negative, if we mess up, you just wash it off um, with some peck and it's gone. With the bleaching, well, you can always um, spot that if you go a little too far. Here, you can really mess up and um, and damage the print. Now, no matter what you do, I can spot this all I want. I've just taken the top layer of gelatin off the print. And that gives, let's see if I can get this angle up for you, that gives, let's see, I almost got it, a different sheen. So let me focus that and you might be able to see it. So it's a slightly different sheen. Now this is a very small spot, so it's not too bad. But a larger spot, I mean, you can still pick it out. Um, what you would need to do then to get a uniform gloss over the whole print from here would be to spray the entire print with a photographic lacquer and that would restore your gloss and hide um, your retouching but if you do that you have to do all your spotting first 
because once you spray it with a lacquer, you can't spot on top of that. It's um, too water resistant. So make sure you're all the rest of your retouching is done and then um, spray with a lacquer, you're good to go. So that is etching with a retouching knife. This particular one, Kodak. So that's retouching a black spot. A little bit different than doing a white spot. So you can retouch the negative using a pen such as this. If you want to get fancy, try a retouching pencil. Just get some retouching fluid. You can bleach the print. Just make sure you wash it thoroughly to get all the bleach and the fixer out. Or you can try your hand at etching the print. Just go through and spray the print afterwards with a uh, photographic lacquer to get your gloss back. All of those methods will work. Um, it's just how much time and practice are you willing to put in. So for me, I find that retouching the negative is the easiest, surest method of doing it uh, with the least amount of effort. Uh, either way, no matter which way you do this, you're going to have to spot the print from white. So uh, I just find this to be the least destructive, but by all means, if you want to spot the black dots out while you're still printing, there's no reason why you can't do that. So go ahead and give it a shot. So thank you for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll keep making videos like this.